Hello, and welcome to the Donahue Group. <laughs> We're just enjoying ourselves here so much this afternoon, even before the show begins, that we, we just need to refocus ourselves and, and introduce ourselves and get ready to talk about interesting issues facing the city uh, and surrounding areas. Um, yeah. With me today, Cal Potter, former state senator and former assistant superintendent of public instruction for library services, Tom Paneski, Professor of Mathematics at UW Sheboygan. Ken Risto, in charge of the Social Studies Department for the Sheboygan Area School District. And I'm a lawyer and just sort of a gadfly, a gad about and in ready charge to of this program. And in, in charge, charge of the, the program, program, at least nominally, until something really <laughs> terrible goes wrong. But uh, we'll Socrates get... was a gadfly. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not quite the expression I want to use, but in any event, uh, there's a, a fair amount going on in the city, although it does seem to be a little bit of a replay. We continue to talk about the police station. It looks like 2007 is the, is the uh, time for the police station, at least as far as the city council is looking at it. Interesting headlines about the cost of actually running it. Uh, I think uh, Finance Department Rich Gephardt put the cost to $272,000, which lo and behold means that we need to lay some people off. Is anybody surprised? No. School no. districts go through this all the time. Build a building, then they have to equip it with uh, desks and all kinds of manner of things, and then need janitorial staff and all kinds of other folks to staff it. Uh, I remember in the same boat. we went through that with the school district when sure. we built the, the last set of additions to the high schools. We got word at around, oh, mid-July before school started that, well, we've got classrooms, but we don't have desks mm -hmm. or chalkboards <laughs> or, <laughs> and all of a sudden money had to be taken out of all sorts of budgets, sure. so I'm not in the least bit surprised that people have well, done that. Except you moved to Sheboygan, we have built a building and we didn't lay anybody off it. We had a donation from the Bratz Foundation and uh, the county was able to to finance it, so we appreciate their, their work. Well, UW Sheboygan has actually been very, very successful in attracting major community support uh, for the uh, Broad Science Building, for the Acuity IT um, Technology building Center, which is yeah. it's going to be a fabulous building. And the, um, the county certainly had to kick in some funds, at least for the, uh, the Acuity Building and matching, but that seems appropriate under the circumstances. Uh, but I just remember moving from our first little house to a somewhat bigger house and thinking, you know what? It takes a lot longer to clean the big house than it does to clean the little house. So I, I think it, uh, I think it is, it's an interesting problem for the city just to deal with all the rising costs and the absolute freeze on, uh, on tax revenues. Although the proposed budget raises city taxes, I believe, by, and I'm just going to look at my, um, a 1.5 percent increase. Uh, uh, the total city tax levy is going to is going to go up. Uh, overall, that seems pretty decent, but it's underneath the inflation rate. Yeah. What is that 1.5? That's the city. That wouldn't be the uh, that's the, the school budget because that's no. coming a little bit under budget, in fact. Well, the school. Under yeah. For those of us who taxes. live in the Sheboygan area school district, three out of four of us, um, because of Governor Doyle's um, clear support for continued funding for public education, we're actually looking at a positive decline in the, uh, in the school taxes. And I, I must say that when I got on the Sheboygan Area School District uh, Board of Education, it was six years of peace and prosperity as we continued to lower tax rates or at least not have them jump up too much. There were some unfortunate side effects. The qualified economic offer was difficult for teachers, or so I'm told. And, uh, and there were other tax uh, restraints in place for the school district back, way back in 96 that, that are just coming to roost in city and county governments. Can I clarify, uh, the, is it the city budget is going to go up by 4%, but the tax levy is going to go up by 1.5%? Uh, they throw different numbers out. Right. You and know, like, <clears throat> yeah. The uh, 2006 right. city budget would include a 4% tax levy increase. 4% tax levy. Uh, right. Um, but the um, percentage increase, the tax rate, will go up 1.5%. So, and I think that's just because of added construction in the... Expanding property tax base is what that really boils down to. Cool. Yeah. So, and um, actually the... The uh, increase is $783,255 over last year. So um, it's, uh, 
it's it's very tight though. Again, you know, we had uh, the mayor here, you know, last last month just talking about what seems to me to be fairly grim realities in 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 this city's government, but really just about any place is really well all over the state if you've been watching the news from other Milwaukee television whatever you're seeing fire departments starting to talk about fees per call or accident scenes for paramedics mm -hmm. uh, you know, I live in a rural area I have a septic tank I got a notice from the county we're going to be assessed so much per year for the first time for having a septic tank and presume that's a fee that's going to go to the county planning office who monitors uh, that area of the uh, sanitary code. So I think you're going to see more of that in Wisconsin. It's going to be interesting to see how the people react because this is typical of what other states have done. Other states have had rather draconian controls on spending increases, mm -hmm. but they've always had a menu that spread wide on fees. And uh, mm -hmm. this is something Wisconsin's never really had. It's always been on the property taxes, the basic basis of local supporting of, of services. Now if we start getting into fire fees and police fees and septic fees and all kinds of road fees. fees. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. see uh, a whole different way of paying for government. Um, be interesting to see how the public reacts to that. Well, and the one thing that uh, we can maybe just segue into talking about the, the county budget, which again is coming in with a slight increase, but not nothing terribly significant. Uh, but the nursing home issue obviously continues to be very, very tricky for for the county. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the I, th I may have this wrong, but the the projected loss in 2006 for the county nursing homes is in the range of about five million dollars. Um, nobody's talking about, at least none of the supervisors that I hear are talking about a county sales tax. And there are, and Cal, maybe you know or you guys know, what number of counties in in, mm -hmm. in the, the state of Wisconsin have. Uh, county uh, sales tax, usually at 0.5 percent, but uh, it's a fair number. It is. It's the majority, I believe. We know, but and particularly in the eastern part of the state, uh, you find where there's been resistance, and I think it mm -hmm. may be due to the fact that uh, property taxes around here have been fairly high because we just have a high level of service. Yeah. It, yeah, and and it's, and it'll be interesting just to see. And I, I think there's hardly a politician. And they're all politicians instead of legislators these days, and we'll talk about that later, but uh, that really wants to talk in any way, shape, or form about uh, creating a new tax. Mm -hmm. Now, the fee issue that I think that you've talked about is, is more palatable in general. Uh, when we've been talking about Tabor and the Taxpayer Bill of Rights and how high income taxes are in Wisconsin and so forth, sometimes we fail to take into account the, that user fees are not as widely used. They're, I mean, they're certainly in place, but not yeah, as bad but, see, as other. Sheboygan had a wheel tax. I was on the council and I voted for the wheel tax, and that was just to take care of the roads and services. And any, mm -hmm. it was minimal, but it was it provided a base. And of course, this new council, last, I don't know, two three years or two three years ago, they got rid of the wheel tax. Yeah. So that fee that was there, they could probably use now. But they, well, actually, I think it's actually in place until 2007. Oh, it is. But I there thought were, they deleted it. Yeah, but there were some promises, at least, that that would not be in place anymore. Is that a good idea, or should we keep it in? Should we keep a wheel tax? It's not much. It's ten dollars, I think, yeah. if, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I don't think it was popular, but I don't think any tax is popular. popular. And yeah. I think the, the key is whether it's going to be a trend. Uh, I've seen other communities that are now looking at pothole fees and so on to, in order to keep up their roads. And if this becomes a, a, the norm, I think. Uh, People are going to say, how do you want your poison? Do you want to pay a fee or do you want to put it on your property tax? Which one do you want? And yeah. people will make some choices. Yeah. And one of the things about sales tax is that it, it's how you pay. And sometimes if we're paying every time we go to the, a store or whatever, it seems a little less painful than when you get your tax bill in December just at Christmas time and you realize that it's costing you three or four or five or six hundred dollars a month just in property taxes to occupy your house. And um, again, it, I think it is a case of, you know, how do you want to take your poison, mm -hmm. so. It's an aggressive tax, just like the property tax. And is your base greater with a sales tax? I think the conclusion of many people, it is. Yeah. Because you have yeah. businesses and others who are kicking in, or, or tourists that will come to your community are paying, and, and people who are just passing through in general uh, are paying through their, uh, through their purchases. Mm -hmm. 
And my, some properties are exempt from the property tax, or right. some yes. nonprofit agencies, churches, mm -hmm. and other agencies are exempt. So, but if they were paying a sales tax, they'd now, pay a little bit. Now, some states and some communities across the country are starting to think about uh, getting around some of the exemptions on no, nonprofit organizations by charging them what in, essence, what in essence they're calling a user's fee. That even though mm. one has a church on that property or the Red Cross or whatever, the Girl Scouts, whatever it might be, you're still using municipal uh, services mm. and you ought to, be, ought to be paying at least for that. So I know some people are trying to go down that road of broadening okay. the tax base by, by making that distinction. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that survives well, First Amendment the, challenges. Yeah. Didn't yeah. the stormwater fee exactly. apply to mm -hmm. all property? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, so there were... They called it a user fee, and it really was a tax, because it applied to everybody. I mean, I could not say, I don't want to participate in the user mm -hmm. fee, right. but I had to. So it's a tax. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to see more and more of that in attempts to widen tax bases mm -hmm. to try to get uh, various nonprofits to at least pay for police and fire protection That's true, along please. the same kind of logic uh, that you saw there. Yeah. And they're not using the word tax because tax always raises those kinds of First Amendment issues, at least with religious organizations. Yeah. And I think um, the, um, for people who can itemize deductions, of course, having the property tax is a nice deduction. Uh, that is, uh, you can so capture far. So, far. so far. So far, but there is the fed, some. The federal the, the, panel is the, saying. The federal commission, yeah. yeah, the presidential commission. Now, who knows what's going to happen with that, especially as we come to an election year. Uh, yeah. I don't think they're going to do anything between now and next November anyway, but the proposal, their, their proposal that the administration is looking at is eliminating uh, the deduction for sales, sales, state taxes, and income taxes, and profit, local property taxes. Mm -hmm. and, and that, I mean, that. And of course, this gets back to the fact that <clears throat> I should say, excuse me, in return for which I think they're going to notch down the income brackets another percentage point. If I remember mm. right, uh, I was looking at it in the Wall Street Journal. So, if you live in a low state ta tax environment and you make fairly decent incomes, you're maybe going to come out a little bit ahead. You have to kind right. of do the math. But mm -hmm. if you're clearly a state like Wisconsin is going to get hammered, yeah. and I think that's sort of the agenda here is to, to try to cut off the spit. You know, try to at least make states' taxes even more, well, probably less palatable than they already are for people. Because yeah. yeah. you know, I can kind of work on my taxes like you are and saying, well, Wisconsin's kind of high here and I don't necessarily like it, but... Well, and you can always rationalize our pro high property tax because if you're in a 25% tax bracket, it means the feds, through your deductibility of the property tax, is picking up 25 or a quarter of exactly. your property tax. When you don't have that anymore, it's kind of tough to, uh, yeah. to rationalize mm -hmm. the higher rates that we do have. Yeah. Yeah. That's the interesting thing about the tax burdens. When we compare states, they always come out and say we're sixth per capita. But when you start taking in total tax burden, including deductibility, we go from sixth to eleventh because you can deduct from your federal tax. So that will surely raise our real net tax burden if the deductibility is scrapped by the feds. When you see a statistic like, um, there was something else in a, when you were talking, Cal, that I was thinking about. Uh, when you see that ranking Wisconsin is six, it's not, is that including the property taxes? Is there some sort of a tax um, the other states it's pay? It's state and local. It doesn't include usually fees. It's the visible yeah. sales tax, income tax, exactly. property tax. And so when you start looking at other fees that other states pay, then the rankings maneuver right. down Wisconsin almost to the middle of the, of the pack, right. I, if I remember right. right. It's pretty close. Right. And, and so it's the, not only what individuals pay. You can get into states like Texas and Louisiana and others that have severance taxes that deal with oil, gas, and so on, and mineral right. um, the taxation, which if you net that in, that helps to keep their tax burden down as well. Yeah. Well, I just remember in law school, just the, the, the basic concept that was conveyed to us and obviously can be conveyed long before you get to law school is that taxation is really social policy. You really talk about how your society is structured and what's important to you and, and how income gets distributed uh, and, and, and all of that based on your tax policy. I always enjoy the discussion about, and we're certainly getting a little far afield here from city and county politics, but tax simplification. And what would we do if there was truly a simple, in quotes, tax system? And probably you can't do it because we have such complex social structures that are governed by you know, who pays what and, and how it goes and, and, uh, and so forth. I mean, it would really be a revolutionary thing if you, if you just said, 
Just pay 15 percent. Yeah. 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 The flat taxers are kind of like the flat earthers, you know. <laughs> you know. Um, nobody well, nobody Europe, escapes it. Yeah. Europe has simplified by going basically to a value added tax, tax where you add. Which is huge. Which is a national sales tax before the consumer gets the product. Right. Um, I have always been opposed to sales taxes, but the more I see what has been happening mm. to our federal tax code, I'm not so sure that the value-added tax isn't a better way to go. Yeah. I mean, there are like 13,000 lobbyists in Washington all clearing water for some special interest, and every tax code revision we've had has always been a boon to somebody who's lobbied mm. most successfully to somebody oh, else. Exactly, exactly. So I, I, I'm not so sure that maybe a value-added tax where yeah. private and public and everybody pays and you can try to at least modify your tax burden by your spending habits. Say, I don't need, really need to buy this, this. Uh, and make those type of choices is yeah. better than being the victim of somebody else's successful lobby effort, and that's really what the tax code has become. And well, the Presidential Commission did, in fact, look at a, a package that in, yeah. did include a, a consumption tax of, of one kind or another. There weren't too many details about what was exempt and mm. what was included in that. Because that. you may want to like we do in Wisconsin with the sales tax, you may want to exempt certain kind of basic foodstuffs and medicines mm -hmm. and those things. Course, legal more services, exemptions, legal yeah, services, well, there you, go. you know. Really yeah. 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 I mean, that, that, therein lies the rub. You, know, you start opening the door to the exemptions and pretty yeah. soon, you know, the Gucci Gulch starts working and you've got lobbyists, you know, making yeah. their case for why their services should be exempt. Yeah. 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 So there's nothing simple about taxes. There is no way to simplify. Uh, because we can't simplify, I don't think, our, our society quite as, as much, but uh, in any event. Um, back to more mundane. Monday, oh. Just before I came, I was yeah. to the radio, they were talking about the bus service. <laughs> really? <laughs> and it wasn't to get rid of it, but there's got to be a better way, because you know, when you count the federal dollars and the city dollars, it was over $3 million, and you're carting people around the city. Now you're carting nobody around the city, maybe a few people around the city. So mm -hmm. they said, how can you better provide a service? Now, Mayor Perez says... With the uh, $3 million plus yeah. budget. Uh, the mayor says, and I have to agree, that <clears throat> there are no city services, by and large, that you can make money on or that breaks even. I know the Register of Deeds is always very proud that her department does not cost the county anything. But every piece of paper you bring into the Register of Deeds, you bring a check along with you because she won't take any paper without a $10 or a $12 or a $7 check. And, and that's fine. I mean, those are user fees for sure. you know, recording your deeds or your getting a birth certificate or, or whatever. But what city services do we have that make money for us or break even? The police don't. The fire department certainly doesn't. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's all about services, so it's just a question of who you serve and what is, mm -hmm. again, what is the basic service? I am I'm representing a, a fellow who's on social, was on social security disability, cognitively disabled. He actually got a job, and good for him, and he's making not great money, but he's supporting himself now, and it's a real success story, I think. And he has a bus pass, $48 a month because he works out in the new industrial park and his family has to take him out when he works Saturdays, he gets overtime, mm -hmm. uh, because the bus service doesn't run mm -hmm. when he needs to go. But what's this fellow gonna do, uh, who's a working member of society, but certainly can never have a driver's license, uh, how's he gonna get to work? And, what and can I- What do you do with $3 million to provide a service to that guy? To, yeah. How many Saturdays are there in a year? You know, 52, 50 Saturdays in a year? Well, there's that dependency because we get so much federal money for it. Exactly. Can't we just hire some, some vans to run people around? I mean, it may not be... Is there a better um, way? Yeah. You know, my kids take <laughs> yeah. the bus home from school. Um, they take the bus here and there, or used to, not so much anymore. Um, I remember growing up here, I took Route 5 down to the library every Saturday was just kind of a tradition, so um, I don't know. That, that gets to my view is, wouldn't it be nice to bring some imagination to government and how mm. we provide services? And there's no better place, I think, to start locally because you can actually affect some changes. You can say, let's look at the city bus service, let's look at the library, which it breaks my heart that it's taking this hit that uh, does seems to be the favorite whipping boy lately for for budget cutters, mm -hmm. but 
<clears throat> how can we provide services? And um, with that in mind, um, people who use Mead Library who are not residents of the city, by and large, don't pay for it. Um, city people who use the police department also pay for the sheriff's department. Are there ways that we can be looking at redistributing the, the equity? Well, I think you have to start looking at regionalization of the service. Um, library districts, for example, would be one thing that Mead could participate in. Mm -hmm. A district that would include those who use the library, who has a, have a different tax uh, mm -hmm. municipality, uh, would be f taxed in that municipality for library services. That's one way. It's averse to anybody who wants expansion of government because it's a new type of government, but it is a way of doing it. Uh, the sheriff's department, well, you could say that some communities, because of their size, maybe don't warrant having their own police department. Maybe the sheriff's department ought to be in a county of uh, 110,000, uh, one of maybe only two police departments. You know, there are, there are mm -hmm. municipalities of hundreds of thousands of people that have one police department, and they work very well. Mm -hmm. We have, what, six or seven police departments <laughs> That's in this right county. That's right, in the county. <laughs> so, you know, all of whom And I are, work for a large number of them, <laughs> so <laughs> we'll just... We'll just yeah. but those are the types of questions that maybe we should be asking, is how many uh -huh. different jurisdictions should plow? How many should have fire departments? How many should have uh -huh. police departments? And I think that's the key that... That's the thing that nobody wants to address. It's How almost like... How many school districts should we have? Yeah, it's like we have when you try to close school a school, you know, or merge a school district. Everybody right. wants to be, uh, have the, the same mascot they did when they were in high school. They don't want right. to make a change. Well, it's mm -hmm. going to take change, I think, if you're going to try to save money. Yeah. Well, I'm intrigued with the library because um, we, um, our family has, we've been staunch supporters of the library, I'm sure all of us sitting here have been. It's a wonderful, beautiful facility. Um, the new, inter uh, the Easy Cat system, uh, which allows me to get a book from Cedarburg in a day, uh, or, or from Lakeland College, to me, is it's kind of a dream come true. Uh, we all talk about, well, where do we want our tax money spent? I like my tax money spent uh, you know, on the public library system. But I do think looking at different ways of doing business, whether it's a taxi cab mm -hmm. service or you know, expanding Eastern Shore's uh, library system and, and having equity. I'm interested in your reaction. Um, this past summer, I believe, the legislature passed a bill that allows city, cities to abolish their police departments which previously had not been a city power. So if you had a police department, you had to keep it. I understand that there is a bill that is going to be introduced that allows people in the city to deduct from their property taxes the money that is allocated to the sheriff's department. So in other words, because we city dwellers, you know, pay twice. What do you think? Um, is, there, is there a different way of looking at providing police services? Can, in fact, a county sheriff's department serve Falls and Plymouth and Kohler and the city? Obviously, it would be a much bigger sheriff's department than it is now. Is that a good idea? I think both those measures are gonna, going to at least push the issue for discussion where it seems no one really wants to talk about it right now yeah. yet. You know, I, was, I was thinking as you were speaking, Cal, about you know, we almost have uh, boutique government services, but we want them at wholesale prices. Mm -hmm. And, and I, you know, I, I, maybe that's what we really need to have is that discussion. Uh, the government isn't free as much as, you know, the national government <laughs> seems to think so yeah. in the last, you know, 40 some odd years, but, but they got to pay for it. And, and if you're not willing to pay for it, then you got to look at consolidation and, and give up the, the right to live in a small little school district where everybody may know their names at the school board meeting and, and have larger areas yeah. and, and on and on. Yeah, didn't uh, Scott McCallum, when he was governor, try something to the fact with shared revenue with the ultimate goal that these jurisdictions will have to get together and work right. and maybe eliminate themselves? Well, it was the <laughs> But of course, it raised such a big hullabaloo, yeah. it, yep. it died. But uh, it, <laughs> the, and of course, it was such a memorable commission. I can't remember the. the no, no, the the professor. Um, oh. 
Yes, I know, I know exactly who you're talking about, <laughs> too. Two senior moments. <laughs> yes, right. Three. Want to make it four? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's a UW um, yeah, He was professor. a UW professor, yeah. and we yeah. talked I about, know, you know, know reconfiguring Let's government. Let's just call him Otto. It's yeah. not the, yeah. it wasn't the What's Kerner Commission, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. but uh, a memorable. Kettle. <laughs> kettle. The Kettle, kettle. Commission. I knew yeah. it began well, with a K. Leave, no. There you go. <laughs> but you are the youngest person here, so. Thank goodness I came up with it. Um, the, I mean, Don Kettle uh, convened the commission, and that was under McCallum, wasn't it? Or was it Tommy Thompson? I can't remember. I think the report came out under McCallum. Yeah, yeah. and uh, really just talking about ways that we can reconfigure and rethink, and boy, we don't get very far, do no, we? You still, no, once you put it out there, all the special interests come in and say, you can't do it. Yeah. Not in my yeah. backyard, not in my turf. Yeah. Well, and people like their local police departments. Um, whether I'm in a village or if I'm in a small city, I mean, we have two small cities, relatively small, Plymouth and Sheboygan Falls. They love their police departments mm -hmm. there. We love our police department here. Um, and yeah. th the sheriff doesn't have quite that because it's, it's a broader and not based in a particular municipality. It's a countywide system, but um, they just got, I just wanted to say, a new dog. And um, their their dog's <laughs> name is Don. <laughs> Don the dog. Sheboygan Don Falls. Uh, <laughs> I named it after Don Kettle. Sheboygan Falls Don. dog is um, two dogs. Larry. Larry and Don. And then uh, the city has its own dog. Now it's D U C. I would say Duke, but I bet it's okay. All right, look at that. It's three dogs. Duke. <laughs> so we've got you know we've got three dogs, and you know maybe we could <laughs> share Let's get another a kennel. one. The full right? dog employment ad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in any wow. event, um, we've got a, a local anonymous donor who's going to give money for tasers, and certainly that's a relatively controversial issue one way or the other. Is, but um, the city council has always said we're okay with tasers as long as we don't have to pay for them, and apparently an anonymous donor will come forth and, and, and give some money for that. So, you know, those are, those are all, I mean, we just, we're real comfortable with our own mm -hmm. little parochial entities, and I think it really is very, it is I very know. difficult. The issue is going to have to be forced, and the forcing yeah. of the issue will be the continuation of the caps, plus looking to fees, and if there's public outrage over the fees, then somebody said, what do we do now? Yeah. Why are we and doing then that? the option is real cuts and real mergers, and but well, the issue has to be forced, in my yeah. opinion. And there are yeah. going to be real cuts because if if the uh, with the mandatory increases in wages, energy, and utility rates, for goodness right. gracious sake, um, the this additional two hundred thirty thousand dollars to operate the new police station if it's co constructed in June of two thousand, big stuff. Yeah. So well, it's been a pleasure. Good, good As always, we've solved the problems of the world. <laughs> yeah.